Welcome to Shorty Super Coach. New Year's Eve. Dangerous stuff. Happy New Year. What's going on, guys? I hope you're well. And I hope you've got some dangerous plans for tonight. If you're watching this before New Year's Eve, before the old midnight, let me know what you're doing. But if you're watching it afterwards and you're recovering, you've got a bit of a headache, you're feeling a bit dusty, we'll straighten up because we're going to talk some Super Coach in a minute. But let me know what you did. Let me know how much fun you had. It's a good time. I mean, have a look at the sun's out. People on holidays, it's a great time. Dangerous time to be a beer, though. You wouldn't want to be one of those. Full disclosure, not a big beer guy, must admit. We'll crack a Canadian club today and might even just bring a little bottle of Malibu and some pineapple juice to really get saucy. I'm probably going to go to Premix King and I might get... Um, I like to shake it up with just, just have a little guava cruiser from time to time. Nothing wrong with that, guys. Nothing wrong with that. Or even those, um, those Bilsons. Like there's fruit tingle and just, just something funky. Because we can't just be drinking CCs all day. Just got to spice it up. But um, going over to Langer's place, um, should be a decent night. Bit of a different crew. A few people I don't know, which is always a bit of fun. Uh, I'm just going to get over there about 6 o'clock and get stuck into it. Bit of a barbecue. A bit more low-key than my last couple. The last few I've spent in Brisbane last year and then Gold Coast the year before that. So should be interesting should be interesting but tizzy i'll be there bronte will be there just a few of the crew don't always get a good chance to drink with them so i'm quite looking forward to that but um wherever you are have a good time it is a fun time of the year no doubt about that let's talk a bit of super coach shall we and, and gold coast as you can see some list changes here some more relevant than others obviously rankin going out hurts him a fair bit we talked about bows in the geelong video if you want to look at any other previews, I've been working through the clubs. So if, you, if you're new to the channel, what's going on? Great to see you. But yeah, if this is like the first video you've seen, then feel free to check out all the other previews. And we'll have different videos in between, just to kind of break it up every three, four, five previews as well. Um, but I did want to get this one out on the new year, just to wish you guys a happy new year. And I'll put it out. I'll pretty much just upload it and try and get it out about four o'clock. Because um, once the festivities start get stuck into it you won't be watching videos but for some the festivities would have started already caitlin just went off to a festival my sister's driving a warnable there'll be some people heavily on the piss by now so oh dangerous scenes dangerous but let's take a look at gold coast i, I probably won't talk too much about the suns because there isn't a great deal to kind of talk about i don't feel i don't think there's much in terms of positional stuff i mean charlie constable will, will he ever break in to the side Will this man ever establish himself? But um, Elijah Hollins as well. You know, he's at an he's a sort of bloke like I used to do the breakout contender, and he'd probably be the guy that I would have as a breakout contender. But whatever he is, three seventy or something like that in the midfield, it's just too awkward for me to talk about him with any substance. We're not going to pick him, but keep him on your radar for a draft. Because he's a solid chance. He only played the five games last year, but I just wanted to give him a mention um, just before we got stuck right into it. And and let's start with Took Miller. And again, I don't have to talk to you much about Took. The bloke's a jet. I was slow to the party on Took, no doubt about that. Probably thought the 124 in 2021 might have been not lucky, but a potential outrider. But gee, he backed it up. Look at these numbers. He just barely goes under the 100. I remember watching him in round 10 when he got tagged, scored that 59. Um, it was very unlike him and didn't take long to bounce back, though. He scored 160 a couple of weeks later, but just works his ass off. He just works so hard, tackles, and, and does chime in for a goal every now and then. So I think he's the sort of guy that you can build your team around. Not necessarily one that I tend to always go for more of a Lockie Neal or a Clayton Oliver, so... He probably does present a bit of a point of difference in terms of your premium. So he's someone you can definitely build your side around. But look, no need to convince you on this one. This bloke's a gun. Certainly a great pick if you are that way inclined. He'll cost a bit, but you know what you're going to get. So that is what our super premiums 120 plus guys are about. There's not many who can do it. And he's done it the last two years. Now, Jared Witt's outstanding year last year. And gee, he absolutely saved me because I panicked on Max Gorn, traded him out early in the year before the price changes, 
and I went with this man. And at the time, I thought, fuck, I've panicked because Gorn bounced back. And I I basically had the plan of bringing Wits in to eventually trade him out because he started the year so well. He started with a 131 and a 75. And I kind of thought, ah, oh, look, you know, even if he gives me 90s, that'll be all right. And I brought him in 95. Yeah, that's fine. Then 154. And I thought, holy shit, maybe this guy's capable. And then there was 150. Look at this. Look at this run. So at about round five, I probably thought, oh, yeah, like he's he's capable, but at some stage we'll trade him out. And then he went in this run of 110 plus with some 130s and 140s all the way to round 12. Unbelievable stuff. So he has always threatened to be a premium ruck. We saw good averages in 19 and 20, even 17. And then we saw an injury affected 87 in 21 from just the three games. Now... Before I really get stuck in the numbers, I do think he's a good pick. I do think he's the number one guy at Gold Coast, going to ruck real nicely in that real prime of his career. It looks like he's finally got the body right. He's playing some great footy. So I don't have to really tell you too much about how good he is, but I do just want to put just as maybe a small buyer beware. I just want to... So if we look at his numbers like we did before... It's clear that he's a between 90 and 100 averaging type of a guy. Nothing wrong with that. The only query I would have on Wits is that was he just running hot at the start of last year? You know how some players just have, you look back on their career and they're like, oh, remember that eight-game patch you had in 22? Or like Nathan Brown's 10-week patch before he broke his leg. And, and we see all sorts of runs from players in certain halves of years and it was the best footy they played for their whole career. Was the start of 22 the best footy Wits ever played in his career? Because what we know so far, the, the bigger sample size suggests that he's a very good ruckman who averages between 93 and 97, more or less. He's done that consistently um, over his career. Some injury-affected years, but that's what he does. After the buy, again, I don't want to rain on the parade, but it's just something to think about. 68, 148 outstanding, 63, 117, great. Then a few sub-90 scores, good, good, around 21 and 22. And then finished with a 90. Now, I think if we add that up, what's that after the buy? That was, what, the last 10 games? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, yeah. 10 games. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck the calculator already. 90, 116, 133, 85, 86, 78, 117, and that's 63. Big dog, 148, and a 68, not so good. Divide that by 10. So after the buy, average 98.4. It's just something to think about. Is he an averager of 105 plus now? He's found that role. He's the main guy. He's got his body right. He's dominating. Or was it a hot patch in the first part of last year? A couple of 140 pluses, really boosted it up. And then he finished the year averaging 98, which is still good. Like it's still good. But a premium ruck, we need to be averaging 100 plus, 105 really. And I just, I just wanted to put it out there. There was nothing terrible about the back end of the year except for a couple of 63s. There was nothing terrible about it, but it's just something to keep in mind. Just something to keep in mind. Um, food for thought. Food for thought. I don't think it'd be a super popular selection because it's a bit of that age-old guy sort of breaks out. We're a bit scared because he's all of a sudden we've got to pay a price for him, but he's only got one genuine premium year behind him. There's always a bit of that, ah, bit scared about that, which I get. Um, and I just I'll be interested to see what the response for Wits is. But yeah, cut it whichever way you like. Will we get the back end of the year for Wits in 2023, or will we get the front end? That is for you to decide. Thomas Berry, Tommy Boy, made his way to the Suns after never really getting a solid opportunity at the Lions. Now, have a look at that. 21, 11 games, but. Gee. Barely got on the field. Barely got on the field. He was involved in the sub basically all the time. 
I think from what I can tell is he's he's a different type of player to Jared and more of your forward type and we do have him available as a forward 123k now like we know he's, he's a pretty good tackler so I envision um, the numbers probably don't suggest it but I'd say that's pretty pretty sub affected I mean he laid five tackles in round eight I'm just gonna see out of interest I'm sure he's had some decent tackle games a six a six in there as well and in 2020 didn't play much footy at all had a five tackle game so look maybe I'm clutching at straws there but from what I can tell I think he's a bit of a pressure forward type and he is available 123k as a forward and what we do know is that Gold Coast lost Isaac Rankin we know that and I think he's probably a guy that's going to try and get that spot that forward pressuring spot and I just think in general like there was a stage where he had a fair bit of promise at Brisbane he actually looked like a fairly likely type had a bit of speed about him um, but just could never break in consistently so gets a chance Gold Coast are yeah with all due respect you're always a chance to get into their side because they just seem to be consistently rebuilding I know they'll be looking at finals this year and they will be looking to boost up the ladder but there just always seems to be a bit of opportunity because there is high list turnover at the Suns and we saw it again last year so he's got to be in the running so I think he's a chance could be a nice little cash cow for us in our team so didn't want to spend too much time on him because I don't know stacks about him aside from watching a little bit of footy and he really hasn't played too much so he's a big watch for the preseason basically but keep him on your radar so yeah that's about all i got for you today guys i think we've got a big giants preview coming up they've got a few guys that i really want to talk about probably the last couple of geelong and gold coast probably haven't had as much to talk about but um nonetheless they are a few fellas that came to my mind and i think we'll be in the discussion for our teams over the next few months so take it easy enjoy tonight if you're watching this new year's day hopefully the head's not too heavy and you're resting up got yourself a gatorade watching the tennis or watching something and taking it nice and easy but hey if you're watching this just before gearing up for the party just crack one right now turn the tunes up and just get a bit of a vibe about you just get a bit of a vibe get the sun on you and have a bloody good night so i'll talk to you soon catch you later guys cheers